Rabbi Yisrael Friedman was the Rosh Hashiva of Oli Teira, Oli Menachem, the Chabad Yeshiva, one of the Chabad Yeshivas in Kron Heights. Rabbi Yisrael was a Talmud, a student of Rabbi Shleim Mechaim Kesselman, and he was, in his own right, a Goin, a genius, both in Nigla, in Talmud, and in Chassidus. I had the opportunity many times to talk with him, to learn from him, and to observe him. My earliest memories of him is Shabbos Mavorchim in the 1970s, when I would go to the, then it was known as the Square Mikveh on Kingston Avenue between Montgomery and Crown Street. Today it's known as Mikvah's Mayor, the beautiful redone building a mikveh with Rabbi Levi Olavashon Shul upstairs. So in that building there was a shtibel. I believe it was the square shtibel and the gabai, the, the shamish gabai was a yid by the name of Rabbi Yidl. I think Rabbi Yidl himself was a belzer chosset and he took care of the mikveh. You had to pay him to, to go to the mikveh half of the times he, he didn't, didn't collect the money half of the times people probably snuck in from the basement from here from there it was lebedic as we say it was lively it was it was a, a scene to be seen Shabbos morning of course it was open and the rebuttal wasn't there and when I would come in early morning like 6 30 7 in the morning Hardly anyone else was on the street when I came to the mikveh. Who did I see there saying Tilim, Shabbos of Orchim, it's a Chabad custom to say the entire Tilim? Two people Rabbi Marlo Oliver Sholem, who became later the Rav of Kran Heights, the Mora da Asra, and the other one, other one was Rabbi Sro Friedman. And I remember looking at it how he was saying Tilim, it was very, you could see like his mouth is. Is saying every word, there's a, an emphasis on every word. It was very interesting for me as a young uh, student to observe a Jew who, you know, articulated quickly uh, every word and just kept on saying it. I, I'm convinced he knew the whole Tillam by heart. Anyway, years later, when my, my parents returned to, to Brooklyn, to live in Brooklyn, and my father settled in Crown Heights. He started to attend Derby Searle's classes. Uh, he gave classes, I believe, once or twice a week in the evening in Gomorrah. And he wouldn't teach the Daf Hayoimi. He would, he would take a tractate, a, Tal a Talmud tractate, a, Tal a tractate of the Talmud, of the Gomorrah, and he would teach it with Gomorrah Rashi, and I think Teisvis, and he would, he would go into it in great depth, Bi'iyun. It was, it was amazing to hear him give uh, a shear on a piece of Gemara. It was so clear. Every word came out of the page into your brain. It was, it was amazing. He allowed the students to dialogue with him, but at the same time, he was sharp and witty. And, you know, if you asked questions that were kind of not to the point, uh, he let you know it. He, he didn't mince words, and it was it, it created the um, the environment, the ambiance of, of real study, real student teacher study di dialogue back and forth. It was it was wonderful to hear and see. Rabbi Yisrael was born in in Russia, I believe, Ukraine, and he came from the Bayaner Rebbe's family. The name Yisroel Friedman was the name of the Bayana Rebbe. And the Rebbe Yisroel came from that family. I believe his, his mother somehow ended up meeting Lubavitch Chassidim. And he started to go to the Lubavitch institutions, either still in Russia or in France. 
I know that in France he told me he would observe it of Nisan of the famous Mashpia, and we've made a clip about him already davening, and he, he remembers when uh, the children were playing outside and they kicked the ball and it went through the window upstairs or somewhere in a room where Nisan was davening and he was oblivious to the ball coming in and the noise and the commotion. He was so attached to his davening. I think his mother, Rabbi Sol's mother, was one of the cooks, or the cook at, in the yeshiva of Brunois at that time in the, in the 40s, late 40s. They came to Eretz Yisrael, they settled in, in Kfar Chabad, and his, his mother was, I believe, known as Gitale. She had a store, which might still exist, and he had several brothers, I believe, and, but he continued being a st- learning and being a student of of, of Reb Shleim Mechayim. And that introduced him to the whole idea of Avodah Satfila, davening with great arichas, length, and kavana. And, he, and he, when he was older, he was sent to learn with some other bocherim to start a Chabad Yeshiva in Haifa, in Haifa. And there was a Rav, a Lababa Chetomim, Rav Gershon Chain was his name, from the Chain family. Additionally, he saw, he knew, and he heard Fabrenians from Rav Shoel Berzislin, Rav Shoel Brook, Avavon Paris. He really was exposed to the giants of Lubavitch at the time, students of the Rebbe Rashab. And then he came to America, in America, he learned in 770, but I believe in 1959 or 1960, maybe 1960, he was appointed by uh, the Rebbe to, to be a Rosh Hashiva, to give a shir in Newark, New Jersey, which today is Morristown. He told, he, he told me that he had Yechidas and the Rebbe, and he said to the Rebbe, what, you know, how can I take the responsibility of teaching them how do I know if it's correct and all of that? And the Rebbe said, I rely on you. There's also a Maima Hasidus that the Rebbe said, I believe in 1958, one Shabbos morning, no one else was around, the Rebbe Yoel wasn't around for whatever reason, and the Rebbe Yisrael was the one who memorized the Maima. He had an excellent, phenomenal memory as well, and he memorized the Maima, and, he, and that's how we have the Maima today. Well, one, another... Interesting, important point is that Rabbi Yisrael was a masaper. He, he enjoyed sharing, but again, all with a with a with a sharfkeit, you know, with a witticism, with a shrewdness. And 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 I was able to you know talk to him and hear from him certain. He communicated from what he heard from the previous generation, people from the previous generation, to to me, to us, to the new generation. And. Um, he was open. He didn't, you know, mince words. He didn't hide facts. He just said it the way it is. And it was wonderful to have a chassid who you could talk to who spoke the truth. You take it, you leave it, you like it, you don't like it. He used to chazer a mimer every Shabbos at, between Mincha and Meirev, usually three out of four weeks at Ramat Lagarari Shashul at Hever Shas on the corner of Kingston and Montgomery. And once a month they asked him to come a chazer a mimer because he chazered so well, so clear and elaborate and loud, he would chazer a mimer once a month at um, the Empire Stiebel. And my father would walk from wherever he was to hear the mimer, and it was amazing. I heard the mimer from him many times, and he wouldn't look at the watch, and Rabbi Garari didn't look at the clock, and he would chazer sometimes 45 minutes a mimer from the Kuti Teira, long mimer. Later he started the Chazer, the Rebbe's Maimorim, but whatever he did was the full Maimor, almost word for word, I'm telling you, it was amazing. It was like you were learning Lukut Torah with him, the weekly Parsha, while he was Chazering the Maimor, reviewing, saying by heart the Maimor. He also had a fund, a fund for students in Oli Torah. He was the Rosh Hashiv in the base Medrash. He had the higher Shir, I believe. And it wasn't just that he had the higher shear, he was like the, the, the life force 
of the base medrash in the sense that he 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 was fire. He was he was he was animated. You know, he 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 was lively, and he involved himself in in teaching in teaching his students. His Hasidish guide was also wonderful. On Simchas Torah, he would take some mashke, and we'd really, really, you know, his heart, and he would dance. His Fabrengens, he Fabrengens here several times in Borough Park to the Polish Oilam here, to the Hasidic people here. He could Fabreng all night. Talking about all night, he stayed once for Shabbos here to be, to be with us for Shabbos in our shul, Beis Menachem. And he stayed in a house by the person, the person who davens with us, one of our members, told me that he didn't go to sleep at all Friday night. And then I found out he was up every Friday night. He didn't go to sleep. He would learn all night. So you're talking about a person who, who not only did he preach, but he lived what he preached. He lived Taira. He lived Chassidus. He lived Chassidishkeit. So when we talk about Chabad, Lubavitcher, Chassidim, who've already passed on and who followed B'darki Rabbi Seinu Nisiyenu, following our leaders, which is the theme of this series, Rabbi Yisrael Friedman is definitely one of the people who contributed big time to this wonderful, wonderful uh, experience. Baruch Hashem, he has a daughter. She, he has a, a daughter who married, and the Mitzvah Hashem will carry on his name. His wife Luba Ola Sholem's name. She was a Gurkov. So the tradition will continue of tremendous diligence and Torah, living the the Rebbe's and the Rabbeim's directives and teaching and raising an entire generation of students. Thank you.